So how do you uh, regroup after what happened to Ja yesterday? Well, um, good thing he was he was better today. You know, now he didn't he didn't do anything today, but uh, I'm hoping he walks in here tomorrow and practices and has a good Friday. You know, you've gotten by without him for yeah. a significant stretch of the season, but considering the quarterback and the receiver you were against, what would it mean to get him out there on Sunday? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I've said it to you guys many times, unfortunately, that uh, the guys have filled it when any time that, that Corey or Carrington have, have um, had to go in and play, they've, they've done a great job. But, yeah, of course, I mean, any week um, you want a Jair Alexander, you know, playing for you in your lineup, uh, especially this week, well, you know, when you're playing against a guy like uh, number four in 88 and uh, Brandon Cooks and the, the whole crew. You know, so, um, so yeah, I'm I'm hoping tomorrow he comes in and feels better and can have a have a fast Friday for us. I don't know if you're planning to match him on CD, not just play your defense, but regardless, does the uncertainty of his situation force you to almost have two different game plans this week? Oh or? yeah, absolutely. I mean that that's that's the thing. Anytime, um, you know, it's it's never easy when you lose a caliber player that Jair is. Um, but yeah, I mean, when, when something happens, I guess what I'm trying to say is that from a game plan standpoint, you would much rather go into Monday and Tuesday as a coaching staff game plan and knowing that he's not going to be in, uh, instead of something happen, happening in a practice. So, um, yeah, so that, that's why I keep saying, and I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, he'll walk in tomorrow and be fine and we can stick with our game plan. We talked about matching in here a million times. Yeah. Um, I was curious, does um, when you do match a guy, does it make your defense more predictable? Like, I mean, your coverage more predictable? Are you still able to do all the things that you know you want to do? Yeah, no. To me, the what the the challenge is when you to answer your specific question. No, you you can run every coverage principle that you want when you go down that road of matching a guy. Um, I've said this before, and it's it's the the challenge is when you match a guy, it's it's not the guy, you know, because the the player is just looking for a jersey number and he's going to that side. It's the rest of the secondary that has to play off that, you know. Um, but you know, we we've, we've we've done it before, and we feel comfortable with it. And um, in today's football, it used to be much easier years ago when I told you guys before when a great receiver was just the X receiver or just the Z receiver and you knew exactly where he was going to be. Um, that's not the case in today's football with these great wideouts. And CD absolutely is one of those. Um, he plays everywhere. He plays Z, he plays X, he plays slot. Um, he motions, you know. Um, so that, that, that in lies the challenge. But, you know, we talked about, you know, adapting and, and evolving. Um, you've had to do that with defenses um, because offenses have they they move those great wideouts around. So when you go down the road of matching somebody, you know you you know the issues. When did that um, when did that start? How long ago was it where guys predominantly played just the one spot? You know, I, I probably want to say in the last probably at least five years, but maybe you go back ten. I mean, there were just always. You know, the great wideouts, they played an X receiver into the boundary or the Z receiver to the field. And just like everything in our game from an offensive perspective or defensive perspective, um, people have evolved. I, th I think that's a big part of why offensive football had evolved, especially when you're talking about unique um, elite wide receivers is that because often our defenses could gang up on that guy knowing that, hey, he's the X, he's always going to be into the boundary. You know, you can roll coverage, you can dictate coverage, you can, you know, take a great corner and put him there all the time knowing exactly where he's going to be. Um, it's evolved to the point now where they move him all over the place, they motion him all over the place. Uh, and now, not all wide receivers can do that, but the elite special ones, um, whether it's CD or... Uh, Devonte or you know those guys they, they play every spot and they can they can align up in every spot they can motion to every spot and it makes it hard on defense obviously we talked last week about just how hard it is to rush a guy like Justin Fields and 
for you to have five sacks and 3.4 yards per carry. Yeah, we should have had seven. We should have had seven or eight, for the record. But but yeah, the guys they they you talk about um, executing a game plan and just just getting after it. It, it was great to see last week. Is, is that the best from a knowing the plan, executing the plan, and then go doing the plan that maybe it's it's been this season? Because talk with you guys in the locker room after. Time and time again, they had a clean shot, and yeah. you saw them time and time again break down. Don't take, don't, don't just hit him as hard as you can. Really, yeah. just get them on the ground however you can. Is that maybe the best that it's been this year? Yeah, you know, I, you know, I think the first game of the year against them, we, you know, we, we, I think we didn't have, I think we had three or four the, the, the first time. Um, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a coordinated effort in the sense of the Russian coverage working together, um, and that's the thing when you play against and. Dak is, you know, Dak's in the same mold. Dak can create with his feet and his legs. Um, and I think the big thing is that you never want to rush cautious. You know, you got to rush smart. Uh, and I thought our guys did a great job of doing that. Going back to the number one receivers, just thinking about Green Bay's offense. You don't have like a number one receiver like Dallas has. From your perspective, is it harder to almost face a offense like Green Bay's that has a, a bunch of legit weapons than to have like the bad one? Yeah. Or not. You know what? I, I think you could you could probably go. Um, you can make an argument either way with that. You know, I, I think what makes Dallas unique is that, you know, CD has. I mean, I, th I think he has like 180 targets. You know, um, and of course he's an elite, great receiver. But um, I was with Brandon Cooks in in LA. I think I think Brandon's been he's been a, a great wideout in this league for a long time. The Ferguson kid is a great target for him. He's their second leading receiver. Now he's got, I think, half the receptions that CD has. But, um, you know, he's an issue and a, and a problem to deal with at the tight end position. And Michael Gallup's been a very good player in that offense for a long time also. So um, I think what makes, you know, Dallas different is that CD has so many targets and so many receptions. Um, you know, they're there. And then you, you add in Pollard into the mix. He's very good out of the backfield receiving, the, you know, uh, catching the ball, so, um, but I think I don't know exactly how I would feel with that. If you know, would you would you go against an offense that has an elite elite number one, or just a group of you know four or five really solid guys? You know, I think you can make an argument either way. But um, Dallas, they they have they have some elite targets out there. There's no doubt about it. With what you're saying about their offense, I'm wondering. You know, you told us after Tampa that the plan in that game was to take Mike Evans out and stop the run, right? And it's almost similar where you, you got to take C.D. Lamb out and stop Pollard. Did you learn anything through that game to, you know, not, not have maybe Dorsey come up and invite you to win it and God one day? What, what was the learning lesson that can be implemented? Yeah, I mean, I, I learned that game. I got to coach better. You know, that's 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 the that's the first and foremost. Um, but. I, I stand up here and talk to you guys every week and tell you, I mean, every single week against every single offense, uh, against every single quarterback, you know, therein lies different challenges. And um, this week they, they got, I, I think, you know, I was, I was in Washington when, when Dak came into the league and, you know, just kind of seeing him, what he's been able to do the last eight years, I don't know if he's, you know, I, I have a ton of respect for him. I think he's played a lot of good football his entire career, but I don't know if he's playing, if he's ever played as good as he's playing right now. Um, just as far as just being, you know, incredibly efficient. You know, um, they put a lot on his plate as far as getting them in and out of, you know, good plays, cannon things, um, and he's 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 playing at an elite level, and he's you know got a bunch of good targets around him too with a great O line. Been around the quarterback all season, and yeah. we're seeing the sack production come through the last couple of weeks. Is that just a product of consistency, or what goes into being able to finish? Yeah, those you know, I, I I love that word. You know, I think he's, um, you know, I think I think Dy finished with five and a half, if I if I'm not mistaken, um, and he really he. I hate when coaches say, "Oh, he could have had you know three or four sacks," and you look at him, you're like, "Come on." I mean, D.Y. missed a legitimate five sacks this year. So, I mean, he, he was very close to having a 10-sack year. So um, it, was, it was great to see the way he finished. Um, and I think it's just, you know, a testament to the kid. I talk about all the time, just guys improving from year one to year two. 
uh, daily improvement, and he shows up every day and grinds and works, and uh, you know it's it's paid off for him with the numbers. Have you seen much of a change in their offense since McCarthy took over the play calling? Uh, based, you know, back when Kellen Moore was here, and then uh, yeah. to them. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, it, it's definitely you can tell it's it's a it's a Mike McCarthy run offense. Um, now I think there's when you have a veteran quarterback like Dak, um, and I think him and him and Kellen were together. I think four or five years. There's subtle things that you can see that they 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 continued to run. They carried over from um, you know just I think things that the quarterback simply was was comfortable with. But um, but you definitely can see that this is this is Mike's offense and he's calling plays compared to uh, years past. There's no doubt. Difference is it more of a West Coast um, flavor to it? Or I, I would say just simply. I used the word earlier, and I, I think just just the efficiency that Dak is playing with. You know, I, I think he's, um, you know, for whatever reason, whether it be the system, um, you know, I, I think this is year three with Mike. You know, I guarantee Mike was still very very involved even in years past when Kellen was calling it. Um, but you can just see the, the, the comfort and efficiency that Dak is playing with definitely this year. Why is your red zone defense been so good? It's, I mean, like, especially, especially the last couple of weeks, you know, they got a bunch of yards, they get down inside the 10, 15-yard line, they yeah. get kind of bricks on. You know, I, I think it's uh, we're, we're, we're comfortable in what we're doing. You know, I, I think we uh, – um, and guys are simply making plays, you know. I, th I think, especially in, in when teams throw the ball, I think it's it's vital. You can have a great rush, um, but if there's a hole in the coverage, there's an issue, and vice versa. Um, you can have phenomenal coverage, but if you're not getting the rush home and the quarterback has five or six seconds to throw the ball, um, I think specifically to answer your question, I think – down there, we've we've played very complimentary with each other. The Russian coverage, um, no matter what principle of coverage that we've decided to you know to use, um, the Russian coverage has complemented each other very well, and it's uh, it's obviously paid off.